In the days since Uvalde, we've had 11 more mass shoot. Hold on. Shit, another one. In the days since Uvalde, we've had 12 more mass. Hold on, news alert. 13. Shit. 14 mass shootings. Jesus. But for some reason, mass shootings are the one part of American culture that isn't popular in other countries. How often are you having mass shootings in India? Is it weekly? Is it daily? Since zero. None. In our 30 years. Absolutely never. none. Never. I've never heard of a mass shooting in Ireland. Wow. So what are they doing differently than us? Mass shootings in America. Everyone knows what's causing them. No one's really saying it. It's the elephant in the room. Let's say it together. America has too many guns. Doors. Wait, what did you say? The one thing America can do to prevent mass shootings is to limit each school to one, or even better, zero doors. I disagree. What? That doesn't make sense. One door, how is that going to work? It's like one door for the entire school? It's like how a jail. It? How are you going to get out of fire? Let's say we're in a school together with no doors and we're in a fire. Yeah. That's why the kids should have guns. No. You shoot out a circle. <laughs> I'll grab your hand. I'll be like, I saw it in an action movie once. Okay. And then we, and then we, we go out, or we shoot out the window. Well, why are they allowed to go? Do you know what I mean? Well, what do guns have to do with it? I'm talking about like yeah. doors. You know, like the shooters come in through doors. Okay. Right? Yeah. I wasn't sure why these tourists were ignoring the real threat to our nation: doors. How did the Polish government defeat the door lobby? They don't. They just let people have doors. Okay. And how many shootings have there been? None. Exactly. What? Well. None. Yeah. But these are little European doors, like little ones that like Hansel and Gretel walk through? No. This is in the old days, with the old doors, the big wooden heavy doors that was real difficult to open. You know, these are new modern doors, like even a kid can open them. There's so many heartless manufacturers, like Smith & West, no, like Crate & Barrel. They make doors. It doesn't have to do with the doors. Hey, I realize doors are a hot button issue, but just keep your cool. I'm not saying anything crazy. I'm just saying, you should have a license to buy a door. You should have a, a, a background check to buy a door. If you have committed a violent crime in the last five years, maybe there's a waiting period for you to buy a door. So wow. you say that buying a gun should be easier than buying any uh, door? But what do guns have to do with it? Guns are what keep us safe. Foreigners like to say that Americans are obsessed with guns. Yet when it comes to preventing mass shootings, all they wanted to talk about was guns. Now, who's obsessed? Do you think it would help to ban revolvers? Yeah. You know, the doors that go around like Oh, that? I thought revolvers. Right. Sorry. Oh, oh, you were thinking of guns. No, no guns, guns in the UK. No Very, shootings. Yeah. But what about your constitutional right to have a gun? No constitutional right. Whoa. Does it suck over there? We have uh, a law. You can't buy a gun just like that. You have to have permission to have a gun. Yeah. Permit, a license. <laughs> yeah, a license. You can't go in the shop and have a gun. It's complicated. It is. But let me tell you what's simple. One door. You keep coming back to these guns. Right. People are coming through the doors to do dangerous stuff. Well, they have to have something dangerous with them, like a gun. And the doors, I don't know, you walk through the doors. I, I can't see the red. I'm sorry, I can't understand. I appreciate you apologizing. An apology accepted. Maybe one day these foreigners will have some actual advice on how to stop mass shootings in America. But until then, our door is open. A woman's right to choose is being eroded across this country. And as a man, I've been paying very close half attention to this issue for several weeks. Thousands of people are standing up for a woman's right to choose. After nearly 50 years, the nation's highest court overturns Roe versus Wade, taking away the constitutional right to an abortion. It's insane that we're going all the way back to the way things were in 1970. It's a war on women. That's what it is. To investigate more into women's reproductive rights, I went to the obvious choice, a man. Meet Dr. Gurarin, who trained in family medicine and obstetrics. Let's talk about some of these anti-abortion laws that are popping up. I mean, right now, women that want to have an abortion have to leave the state like it's Ted Cruz during an emergency. It seems that we either uh, punish, criticize, and judge just the women. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that is an issue because men actually were part of, the, of that reproductive uh, process. It takes two to tango, mm. and, and the men seem to be absent in this, in this whole discussion. 
You're right. Absolutely. And, and, and we can protest and we can vote and we can... Get a vasectomy. And what did you just say? Get a vasectomy. Oh, okay, okay, slow down, slow down. Isn't that a bit zero to 100? Can we maybe tickle the balls before we slice them off? We don't slice testicles off. Listen, uh, Michael. Yes. For decades, women have, have carried the burden of contraception. Yeah. Men in general have assumed that reproductive decisions fall on the shoulders of women. Mm. So getting more vasectomies actually is going to show that we care, that we want to participate. It's not, that's not all, but that's a very good first step. Cutting off the balls is the good first step. Do you understand what a vasectomy is? Yeah, it's when you remove the, the vasect in me. You actually interrupt a tiny little tube called the vas deferens. The vas deferens, you interrupt mm -hmm. that. I know, but keep, continue, please. Well, the vas deferens is a small structure that comes out of the testicle. Out of the testicle, that's where the vas deferens are, the testicles, please and continue. And transports the sperm. Sperm. Uh. And put it into the semen yeah. so that it comes out right, the through the penis, right. and then you can get somebody pregnant. Penis. <laughs> do you have to wear one of those cones? That's what my dog has to do. No, you don't. If I get a vasectomy, how high will my voice go after that? It, it will not. I will be talking, hey, Dr. G did my vasectomy. No. M listen, Michael, it is responsible to do something like that because you are being part of the, of the reproductive decisions. And Dr. G wasn't alone in his beliefs of neutering men to make the world a better place. About a half million vasectomies are performed in the United States every year. Doctors say that number may be increasing in Texas following the passage of the state's Heartbeat Act. That's right. So far, there's been a 15% surge of vasectomies motivated by the state law. Have you ever had a vasectomy? Yes, I did my own vasectomy. You did it? I did it. Was it like a moment of extreme horniness and you had to do it right then and there? Listen, the point here is not, I did my vasectomy. The point is... No, that is the point. Are there any other medical procedures you've performed on yourself, crazy doctor? Point no. is, it, I, it is so simple that if the surgeon decides to do it mm -hmm. and is able to do it, then other men should have no problem getting that procedure done. Okay, what about just the pull-out method? The pull-out method doesn't favorite. work? It doesn't. Oh my God. Oh my God. Maybe Dr. G was onto something, but I wanted to hear from a regular old Joe who wasn't a doctor, a completely normal American who was willing to get his scrotum touched and let me watch. Why are you getting a vasectomy? Um, I'm getting one because my wife has already went through, you know, childbirth and all of those different hormone changes. So I just figured that a vasectomy was something that I could do to help take some of that burden off of her. You know, I have a kid. She's cute, two years old. There are good days, right? Those are nice, those good days. Thanks. And there are bad days. You know, yesterday, she wouldn't eat. So I made her some oatmeal, and she keeps taking the spoon and throwing the spoon, and I would say, no throw, and then she'd say, no throw, and then I would pick up the spoon and give it back to her, and then she would throw it. And then I'm like, okay, so you're not gonna eat. So then, then I try to put pants on her, but she won't put her pants on. If anything, she ripped off her diaper and it's filled with all this like gross urine and poo. And then she throws the diaper up and now the dog is eating the diaper filled with poo. And I'm going, do I love my kid? I think I love my kid. You know, I tell her I love her all the time, but she never says anything back. If anything, she just takes, takes, take, you know? Here I am making all this money and she just is, is throwing her diapers and throwing the oatmeal in it. It's f***ing hard being a parent, man. Maybe I should get a vasectomy. You should look into it. You're a cool guy. I think it's cool you're doing this. And if people at home, you know, aren't sure if Travis is a cool dude, his sunglasses are on his head. Yeah. For an indoor interview. Yeah. I mean, if anything, that communicates you're a bad mother Definitely. I look forward to seeing your scrotal sack and the left and right vas deferens. I'm sure Travis had some great memories with his uncut vas deferens, but now, it was time to say goodbye. Oh, these nuts, the pipes, the pipes, they just no more. Snip, snip, hooray. Enjoy the carefree set.
sex if change your mind it's totally reversible sleepless nights you'll still have them but it won't be from unwanted children we're done what we're done you're done i haven't even gotten to my other verse i mean that's fast all right no more Travis seeds to impregnate women. That's a hero. And while getting a vasectomy is not a solution in helping women with their reproductive rights, it is a snip in the right direction. As a Trump supporter in America, you already know that cops treat people like us differently. We can be profiled and misjudged any time just trying to overthrow a free and fair election. That's why it's time for us to have the, the talk. talk. As a Trump supporter, it's important to remember that law enforcement is always out to get you. You can be targeted solely because of how you look, or what you chant, or who you're assaulting with a flagpole. How many young and middle-aged men have already been arrested just because they tried to vote for Trump one too many times? And then stormed the Capitol. And then posted on Facebook, for some reason. And they'll use anything against you. Your skin color, your politics, evidence. If you so much as think about overthrowing the government and then actually attempt to, there is nothing anyone can do to protect you. Well, unless your husband is like on the Supreme Court. Sure. You know. So first rule, always listen politely to the police. Mm -hmm. Don't freak out and call them bullies or fascists until after you're booked on Tucker Carlson. The bad news is that if they do arrest you, you can expect the worst kind of abuse. Mm -hmm. They'll put you in handcuffs, take you to the station, and put you behind bars and then lock them. These are things no criminal should have to suffer. And now they're openly throwing around the word traitor? Yeah, with a hard R. You know, every time I see a young man being hassled by police for smearing feces on the walls of Nancy Pelosi's office, I think that could be our son. Mm. He is a sweet boy and we're proud of him. Yeah. He is a proud boy. So that's the way things are. And hopefully the next generation of conservatives won't have to have this talk. Because there won't be elections. Exactly. My name is Judge Raymond Deary, and I am currently the special master appointed to review the files that were in former President Trump's office in Mar-a-Lago. I've been a judge since 1986. I've had many great moments in my career. This is a moment. It's fine. Uh, the first task is dividing the documents into files that are classified, files that are declassified, and files that are stuffed with cold cuts. The first one I thought was just a mistake, but now I think he thought the folders are also a type of bread? They're both kind of brown, I guess? Is this where I saw myself at age 78, sorting through an ex-president's personal stash of America's most sensitive secrets in his used underwear? No, I'd rather be on a beach or, or dead. That sounds nice. You know, none of this is very organized. I mean, here we've got what appears to be blueprints for a nuclear f So that should probably go in the classified pile. But then you open it up, and inside is just a copy of the 1983 May Beaver Hunt magazine. But then you open up Beaver Hunt, and inside is a USB drive that's property of the CIA. And this thumb drive holds critical nuclear... Oh, it's actually just a digital version of Beaver Hunt magazine. Well, this could actually be interesting. But I have found some interesting items. Um, this is a to-do list. It just says President Macron's wife. I'm not even sure I understand what, oh. I get it, I can't believe I'm doing this. I've maintained a professional relationship with President Trump in order to clarify the nature of the documents, but it can be difficult because he is, well, in a legal sense, just so stupid. Okay, but Mr. President, did you declassify this list of undercover counterintelligent operatives? If you're the President of the United States, you can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. Okay, well, how do I know if you thought about... You know, never mind. These spies are as good as dead anyways. I know the country's eager for me to finish, but there's just so, so much to go through. Like, piles. Help! Dumps of piles of stuff. Ah! God damn it, I hate this job so much. This is hell. I mean, miserable, agonizing, unyielding hell. But at least I get a free lunch. 
Conspiracies, they're everywhere. Or are they nowhere? Or is that exactly what they want you to think? So that's where my wallet is. Well, for every they, there's a me. I'm Kevin Matthew Kelp. Follow me as I pull back the curtain to find the truth behind the curtain. This is Project Conspiracy. Everywhere we go, vehicles are spying on us. Cop cars, unmarked vans, roller coasters. But what if I were to tell you there was another kind of vehicle monitoring Americans right underneath our noses? Or should I say our mouths? I'm talking about ice cream trucks. The classic all-American ice cream truck. Seems like just an innocent way to get a tasty treat until you do some digging. Meet Harry Burt, inventor of the ice cream truck. In 1923, he patented his creation with, you guessed it, the US government. AKA the people monitoring us so closely they even know my social security number. So why did Burt team up with Big Brother? I'll tell you why. Because of the massive amount of intel these spy cream trucks can gather in plain sight. Foot traffic patterns, snacking habits, a third thing I'll figure out later. All they needed was the perfect cover. The ice cream. Brain freeze. Oh. Oh. It's time to figure out what exactly these trucks are up to. One chocolate eclair bar. Or did you already know that? Uh, no. Actually, make it two. I'm really hungry and I'm getting ready to do a stakeout. Wait, not for you though. $10. Okay, I hope you got what you were looking for, Mr. Ice Cream Man. This is $30. Dude, don't, don't. My interaction with the ice cream Gestapo seemed normal. All too normal. So I kept watching for hours, fighting the temptation to get more ice cream and only succumbing all of the time. Why couldn't I resist this truck? That's when I realized their most dangerous weapon. The song. It's the song. Hey, you spying on kids, you pervert? No, I, I mean, kind of, but... Uh, hey. It was never just the ice cream. The truck siren song was its secret weapon the whole time. And I'm gonna prove it. Hey, where's the ice cream? Oh, I don't have any. I was just proving a theory and it worked, so thank you. Give us the f ice cream. Run! Run! Get it! Go, go! Music has long been a psychological tool for deep state forces like the CIA, the radical left, and Chili's. Convincing ordinary citizens to confess, to vote, and to eat against their own self-interest. Ah, those kids, man. Those kids are tough. But if I'm ever gonna get the real scoop on this musical conspiracy, I need to go inside the belly of the beast. Let's go. So this is where everything happens and this is the ice cream truck. So. Okay, ma'am, I'm ready for the job interview, so. Uh, you know we don't make you dress like that anymore, right? So where do you turn on the uh, mind control song? Excuse me, the um, ice cream totally normal, the jingle? <clears throat> So, you're some sort of undercover conspiracy reporter? How do you know that? Who do you work for? You put it on your resume. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a typo. The whole job description? Yeah. I've been made, abort, abort, I've been made, abort, abort, abort. Oh God, come on. So, do you not want the job? <sighs> Uh, clearly, whatever deep state agency is behind these trucks will stop at nothing to stop me from stopping them. But don't worry, resistance is possible. 
Thanks to these noise canceling headphones, the only thing I'll be hooked on is the sweet taste of freedom. in Atlanta to show you the places that the guidebooks won't take you. We get a skinnier guidebook? First stop, the one and only Trap Museum. So what is the Trap Museum? Trap Music Museum, actually. Trap Music Museum? Yes. I was thinking it was like holes in the ground and Spikes coming out. No. You know, Indiana Jones stuff. I don't need this flashlight and skeleton key. You don't need that at all, actually. KG educated me on the forefathers of trap, loved by their fans and hated by the DEA. T.I., a.k.a. Tip, Gucci Mane, and my personal fave, Jeezy. Huh? Yep. Uh, don't touch things. Sorry, my bad. Just, I see Coke and I get all excited. So Jeezy is known as the snowman, and of course these are bricks. For my white people, snowman is cocaine man. And these, this is bricks, these are, think, this is cocaine. I think white people know about cocaine. What do these pictures look like to you? Is this a trap for me? <laughs> I mean, they look like mug shots, but is that? Yes, is it that, is. Okay. Good job. Good job. I am, so I am, I am on a balance beam. So the goal of this piece, it's, they did what they had to do to come out of their circumstances, but it led into multi-million dollar businesses. Yeah, makes you feel something when you see a mugshot. Martin Luther King had a mugshot. Happens. Don't Google if Michael Costa does. So these are the mm -hmm. trap commandments, yep. and okay. there's 10 of them. I try to live my life very much like Trap Commandment 7. Peep shit from miles away. That cap ain't about nothing. I mean, uh -huh. that's truly how I've organized my career. Really? See, but when I think of you, I uh -huh. think of what Trap Commandment number three. Never go to sleep around a stripper. Yeah. yeah. No, that is good. That was good advice. <laughs> Which brings us to our next destination, Magic City, home of Atlanta's finest lemon pepper wings. And no, that's not a euphemism. Well, lemon pepper wings are a staple of Atlanta flavor. Uh -huh. Lemon pepper loo is a staple of Magic City. Yeah. Wow. These wings are amazing. The wings haven't got here yet, Mike. Oh, OK. Once I tasted them things, I knew why people preferred wings over breasts and thighs. That's a delicious wing. Mm. Would you like a wing or not while you're working? Uh -huh. So I ended up staying a while to you know, try every flavor. Uh, sorry, there's some lemon pepper sauce on the money. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had so much fun that evening that I broke trap commandment number three. And then it was time to stumble to my next destination, the grocery spot. This is the supreme of grocery stores. There's a line around the block. Let's go check it out. Follow me. Do you Excuse have a number? What? Do number? I, I just, Do you have a number? I got, I'm, a, I'm on TV. I'm a celebrity. You don't have a number. You gotta go. <laughs> I mean, what is... <laughs> the grocery spot is the brainchild of local hipster Matthew Jones. And it's not your grandma's grocery store. Featuring street art, a DJ, and a line around the block, I knew I'd have to blend in with these Atlanta scenesters to get past the bouncer. But once I got inside, I was surprised to find just a regular store. Uh, I don't get it. It's just people buying groceries. Just pretend you get it for camera. Just pretend I get it for camera. OK. As you can see behind me, there is no explanation needed. This place is popular for obvious reasons. And if you don't get it, well, then you're dumb. But then I noticed something odd. People were taking food and just walking out without paying. So after stuffing a few essentials in my pockets, I went to warn the owner. You gotta do an undercover boss here, man. Like, people are just walking out with their food. Yeah. You know, she just took a dollar, and the guy had a full bag of food. Yeah, that's how it works here. They don't even have to give a dollar. It's all free. It's what we do. What? The food. business model is to feed people for free. We're gonna give it to you. It's like, wow. It's Atlanta's own, only free, sustainable grocery store. We, we feed around 400 people per day, three days a week. What inspired you to do something so stupid? We tried for profit mm -hmm. uh, and it mm -hmm. failed terribly. So then we learned what mutual aid was. Matthew explained how his pay what you can model was a response to Atlanta's problems with food insecurity. 
No, it's not when your little sandwich feels pathetic next to that giant hoagie. It's people who aren't starving, but are still struggling to get enough food to feed their families. Our demographic is the working class family, the people who make too much to have help and government resources, but don't make enough to actually make it on their own. Okay, well I guess I'm glad I'm here, because I can yeah. really advise you on how to turn this place into a, a profitable grocery store. I don't think you understand how nonprofits work, but that's okay. First taste is free, second taste, third, fourth, fifth. But then like once people get hooked, that's when you flip the script and start hitting them with the price? Well, well hopefully, right? That, uh, eventually yeah. the goal would be to where you could pay for your own groceries and help feed another family. Shh, stupid. What about turning this thing into a strip club? I mean, if there's one thing Atlanta's taught me, Anywhere can be a strip club. No. So what do the customers think oh, of my bold line. new ideas? Okay. Look, the food is free, but it's 40 bucks to get in the door. Like, no, nah, man. What if he just puts big price tags on each item? That way the rich people have to pay. No. What if it's like a $50 tote bag, but it's artisanal and it's cool, and then like people could buy the tote bag? Why, why would we want to do that? Um, because totes are f Sweet. But these folks did agree on one thing, the store has changed their lives. We have to travel like far to get, you know, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, fresh meats. Now it's convenient for the neighborhood. Man, this is a, not a business, it's, this is the community. Spiritual, 100%. Suddenly this zero dollar making business didn't sound like such a bad idea. I'm inspired by your story and the story of the grocery spot. So I would like to pay what I can. Check. Thank you very much, man. Please act blown away like I wrote you a check for a massive amount of money. Come on, dude, don't. Just, 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 just don't read it, just have it.